Hello, this is Dr. Murlidhar from the Department of Extreme Technology, AC College of Technology, Anna University, Chennai, deliberating on basic weaves. A brief introduction on basic weaves, own fabric design or weave are composed of warp and web threads according to the form of design that are desired to be desired. The repeat or a pattern is a small unit of weave repeating on a specified number of ends and picks, which when repeated produce the required design. The weave influences the aesthetic as well as the properties of the woven fabric. The interlacement pattern of the woven fabrics are manipulated using the drafting order and the lifting plan. The weaves are constructed on a point paper using cross marks and blanks. A cross mark in a point paper means warp up, whereas a blank means a weft up. Woven fabric structures may be broadly divided into two principal categories, simple structures and com compound structures. Simple structures, in simple structures there is one series of warp and one series of weft, whereas in compound structure there is more than one series of warp and one series of weft, whereas some are used for the design purpose, ornamentation and others are used for the ground structure. The learning objectives of this module is to understand the construction of basic weaves and to learn about drafting and lifting plan and to learn about a few fancy weaves. Weaves are the pattern of interlacement of the corresponding warp and weft threads. A weave repeats on a definite number of ends and picks. And the number of ends and picks in a repeat may be equal or unequal. The lifting plan is a selection of heels to be raised or lowered on each successive insertion of the weft. Lifting plan indicates the order in which the heel shaft should be lifted for successive weft insertion to produce a particular weave or design. This depends on the weave and, the, and its drafting plan. The draft indicates the number of heels required to produce a design. And depending on the number of working ends working differently, the number of heel shafts varies. Okay. Drafting order determines as to how the warp ends are drawn through the heels, that is, which end passes through which heel. Number of heels depend on number of ends working differently. This implies that if the interlacement pattern of a thread is same, then they should be drawn through the same heel shaft. In a straight draft, the uh, slanting line is formed by crosses across the point paper as shown in figure. This means that each end of the design works differently as such the end needs to be drawn through different heel shaft. Coming to the pointer draft, as the name indicates, it's a pointer draft. The, uh, the weave repeat contains ends working with similar interlacements. As such, for a weave repeating on seven ends, only four heel shafts are required, as shown below. And the skip draft. Skip draft is useful in weaving very dense and set closed set fabrics, where normally a small number of heels are required. This, is, this system reduces the friction and rubbing between the ends by using more heels. Than, uh, minim than the minimum necessary. In a skip draft, more than one heel shaft are controlled by the shedding mechanism. For example, plain weave textiles can be woven with two heels, but when producing textiles with high number of ends and picks per unit area, it is often suitable to use four heel shafts to reduce the jamming of threads in the heels. The skip draft for plain weave is shown in figure. The denting. During weaving, during, uh, during weaving, warp ends are uh, spaced out across the width of the warp sheet according to the desired density by Y rates. The denting order frequently used being 2, 3 or 4 dents per, uh, 4 ends per dent. Plain weave. Plain weave is used to a greater extent than any other weave. It is the simplest weave repeating on 2 ends and 2 picks. Each warp yarn passes alternatively above and below the, below each weft yarn similarly. This weave has the maximum number of interlacements compared to other weaves, hence the fabric is stronger and compared to all other materials. Further, the crimp of the yarn is in this weave is also higher than other weaves. Plain weave interlacements are shown on point paper in figure 4. Plain weave can be produced on loom with two heel shafts. Plain weave derivatives. In the plain weave derivative, the plain notations are extended in warp or weft direction or both in warp or weft direction, namely warp rib, weft rib or mat or basket weave. All plain derivatives can be produced using two heel shafts. Warp rib. In a warp rib weave, the plain notation is extended for one additional pick in a group, that is two or more picks are inserted in the same shed. With the warp ends floating over two picks, the warp rib become distinct in the warp direction of the fabric. As the weft yarn undergoes more number of interlacements compared to the warp ends, the weft crimp is higher than the warp crimp. Further, due to the nature of interlacement, the warp direction has higher tear strength compared to any equivalent plain cloth, having a similar aerial density. 
figure 5 shows the drafting design and lifting plan of a warp grid. As shown in the figure, you can see there are two ends, warp end 1 and warp end 2. On the plane mark in the warp end is extended for two, uh, two picks and similarly for the warp end 2, the interlacement is extended on two picks. And for this view, there are, we require two heel shafts. The threads of the warp end 1 is drawn in heel shaft number 1 and the ends of the warp end 2 are drawn to the heel shaft number 2 and the lifting plan is very similar to the design, basic design. Weft rib. In a weft rib view, the plane notation is extended for one or more additional warp end. That is, two or more warp ends weave together as one. With the weft pick floating over two ends, the weft ribs become distinct in the weft direction of the fabric. As the warp yarn undergoes more number of interlacements compared to the weft tip, the warp crimp is higher than the weft crimp. Further, due to the interlacement, nature of interlacement, the weft direction has higher tear strength compared to any equivalent plane fabric having similar aerial density. Figure shows, 6 shows the lifting design, draft and peg plan of the weft rib structure. In this figure, you can see that the, the weft mark is extended in the, to the two additional warp ends and the, it's, again you require two heel shafts to operate this, this thing and the design is very similar to the basic plane view. Yeah. The lifting order is similar to the plane view. Mat or basket view. In a mat view, the plane view marks are extended both in the warp as well as in the weft direction. That is two or more warp ends and two or more weft picks in one or more directions. With the warp end floating over two picks and weft end floating over two ends, the minimum number of ends and picks required for the formation of a mat weave is 2 by 2. Further, due to the nature of interlacement, the tear strength is higher in both the directions compared to any equivalent plane woven fabric having similar aerial density. We are coming to the second basic weave which is a twill weave. Twill weaves are characterized by the diagonal line formed across from left to right or from right to left. The angle of twill varies between 15 to 75 degrees. The simplest uh, twill weave repeats on three ends and three picks. Compared to plain weave, the twill weaves have lesser number of interlacements and the crimp is lower. Twill weaves are further classified into warp weft or balanced twill based on the prominence of either warp or weft. Twill interlacements are denoted by using numbers above and below. Below a line such as 1 by 2 interpreted as 1 up 2 down. There are several types of basic weave such as 2 up 1 down, 2 up 2 down, 3 up 1 down, 1 up 3 down etc. In a warp phase twill weave, the warp and ends float more predominantly over the weft ends. Whereas in a weft phase twill weave, the weft ends or the picks float more predominantly over the warp ends. If the face side of the cloth contains warp phased twill, the back side of the same cloth will have weft phased twill weaves. However, in balanced twill weave, the floats of the warp and the weft yarns would be equal. Figure of a warp face, uh, you can see the figure, there is a, there is a two up one down twill where there are two warp ends lifted to one this thing. Whereas you have the next figure which is 2 up 2 down which is an equal face to a 2 up 2 down twill which is repeating on 4 ends and 4 picks. Twill angle, twill angle, figure 9 illust illustrates the twill angle made by the twill line with weft or horizontal direction. It depends on the moon number and the design of, moon number of the design and the ends and picks spacing. So you can see the different angles which the twill line can form. It can vary from 15 to 75 degrees pointed twill. In a pointed twill, the characteristic diagonal line formed with the direction at specified intervals, thus creating the pointed effect on the textile. The pointed twill base design is woven using a pointed draft and the lifting order resembles the left hand side of the design. Here you can see the pointed design which is working on a four in the, this thing, they have two up two up two down twill is basic twill is used and the number of ends which is repeating on is seven. So the, uh, the, the design is uh, turned or pointed at from the fourth end onwards 
I can see that our end number one is drawn in heel shaft number one, end number two in heel shaft number two, end number three in heel shaft number three, and end number four in heel shaft number four. Whereas end number five, which the interlacement is similar to end number three, is drawn in the heel shaft number three. And similarly, end number six is similar to end number two, which is drawn in the same heel shaft. And similarly, the end number seven is similar to end number one. So the ends working similarly are drawn through the heel shaft, though the number of the design repeats on eight ends and uh, four picks. The number of heel shafts required are four, and the lifting order is also on four ends and four picks. Yeah. So the third of the basic weaves is a satin or a satin weave, which is characterized by smooth appearance without the continuous twill line, with only one binding point in each end and pick in the design repeat. Satin fabric is characterized by high luster on one side of the fabric. Satin weave is warp faced, whereas satin weave is weft faced. For the construction of satin weave, a feasible move number is chosen, and using this move number, only those points are marked on the point paper where the end is floating on the pick. Pick 11, ex example of a 7 inch satin with all possible moves, this move number is shown. As you can see in the figure here, the for a 7 and repeat 1 by 7 the move is number is 1 the first end there is one interlacement when you the second end is one move right and one move up the third interlacement is one move right and one move up and in this way you can see move number 1 produces a diagonal twill whereas in the second this thing you can see the move is two move to the first interlacement so the first interlacement two move right and two move one up two move right one up two move right and one up so in this way you can see that there are only one interlacement in each this, each thread, each warp and weft thread and there are uh, no prominent diagonal lines. Similarly in figure number 3, in the third this thing you can see the move number 3. From the first interlacement the move is 3 to the right and 1 up, 3 to the right and 1 up, 3 to the right and 1 up, 3 to the right and 1 up. In this way you can see that the diagonal line is uh, also uh, lost whereas you can see there is only one interlacement in each warp and with move number 4, you can see again from the point of interlacement, first interlacement, 4 move to the right and 1 up, 4 move to the right and 1 up, again you get a satin weave. Similarly with move number 5, you get a satin weave as there is only one interlacement each warp end and weft int introduced, whereas move number 6 produces a uh, right hand twill, which is the diagonal line is from right to left. So, you can see that all the moves are not possible, move 1 and move 6 cannot be used for, my, for construction of satin weave. Rules for making satin weave, it is observed that move number 1 and n minus 1 produce two twill weaves, hence cannot be used. Here n is the repeat size of the design. The move number and repeat size of the design should not have any common factor. However, move number 2, 3, 4 and 5 produce valid satin weaves. On a point paper, the satin weave can be converted to satin weave by interchanging the cross marks with the blank spaces and vice versa. I'm going to the fancy weave, honeycomb. <coughs> honeycomb weave produces ridges and hollow which give a cell like appearance to the cloth textiles. Both the warp and the weft thread float freely, show prominent diamond shapes on the fabric created by a long floats on both sides coupled with a rough structure which absorbs moisture readily. readily. Honeycomb designs can be produced with pointed draft and thus the lifting plan resembles the left hand side of the design. The weaves are of two types, ordinary honeycomb which produces similar effect on both sides of the cloth. Here you can see an ordinary honeycomb produced on 11 ends and 8 picks. So you can see the diagonal line from left to right being produced and then on from right to right and you can see the number of the warp and the wet floats being uh, being the same. But as you can see the number of uh, heel shafts required is only 5 heel shafts and the pointed draft being used to convert this ordinary honeycomb. And the lifting order is very similar to the left half of the design so which is you just transfer the interlacement from the left half as it is. Then we go to the Brighton honeycomb which produces cellular formation on one side of the cloth only. Construction of Brighton honeycomb is quite different from ordinary honeycomb and requires to be woven in straight draft. Further, the number of thread in the repeat must be in multiples of four. The diamond base is first made by inserting a single row of mark in one direction and a double row of mark in the other direction. Marks are then added to the double row so as to form a small warp diamond 
in the right and left corner of each diamond space as shown in figure 13. So as you can see in the figure 13, uh, it's a 16 thread Brighton honeycomb. In this you can see the prominent diagonal mark created by introducing cross marks from left to right. Then you can see the double the cross lines which is introduced from right to left and to this additional marks are added to produce the diamond shapes. You can see there are two, three, four diamond shapes in all and this is a single sided uh, this thing is produced. This is the Brighton honeycomb mock cleaner. In a mock cleaner view some of the ends have interlacements whereas the other ends have long floats. The fabric shows small holes created by the grouping of threads. The view produces effects similar to gauze or linen. A mock cleaner weave having a repeat size of 10 by 10 is shown in figure 14 along with the drafting and the lifting plan. Only four heated shafts are needed, needed as the interlacement pattern of ends 1, 3, 5 are same and they are drawn through heel shaft number 1. Similarly, the interlacement pattern of ends 2 and 4 are same and they are allocated heel shaft number 2 and so on. So here you can see a bright and honeycomb 10 by produced on 10 by 10 and you can see the number of heel shafts required on only 4 heel shafts and the design and the peg lifting order is constitutes of 4 four heels. Huckaback. Huckaback weaves are largely used for cotton towels. The structure is so arranged that the weave, plain weave gives very hard wear and firmness whereas the loose floats pick up good moisture. Huckaback weaves have some similarity with the mock lino. A 10 by 10 huckaback weave is shown in figure. If the design is divided into four quadrants, then the top right and the bottom left corner are having similar interlacements. However, the remaining two quadrants have plain weave like interlacement patterns. Therefore, some of the ends end 2, 4, 7 and 9 are having long floats followed by regular interlacements. And the design shown below requires four heel shaft. So you can see a 10 by 10 Moclino with the uh, interlacements of plane on the two opposite quadrants and floats on two opposite quadrants and there you can see the design is produced on four heat shafts. This is about the Huckaback view. To sum up this module, I would like to revamp the different points we, we have discussed today. As to first thing about the different basic views which we have studied, the plane view, the twill view and the satin view and further the fancy views which we have studied and then the importance of uh, the drafting order which uh, determines the order in which the weave is being constructed and the lifting plan which is generally depending upon the design it is design or part of the design so you know the design the basic weaves there are three basic weaves and its derivatives the plane weaves how it is derived how the plane marks have been extended and how the warp web trip and the basket weaves have been constructed and the number of uh, he heels have though the design repeats on a large number of ends and picks uh, a number of heel, sh heel shafts required to produce a, a basic plane weave remains two heel shafts. Whereas in uh, twill weave, we have seen that the basic plane, the twill weave repeats on three ends and three picks, and the minimum number of heel shafts uh, required is three heel shafts. Uh, and thereby, we have seen how the draft can be uh, converted from a straight draft to a pointed draft, different and increasing the base of the design. And in uh, uh, fancy weaves, in the satin weaves, we have seen both the warp and the web satin weaves, in which the satin, how the uh, different moves are selected to break the uh, twill monotony and to give a lustrous effect to the fabric. So the face side of the fabric is uh, a satin a web face and the reverse of the fabric is a satin weave. Mm -hmm. so continuing on, on the, this thing, we have seen about the uh, fancy weaves, we have seen about the mock lino weave, the honeycomb weave and the uh, Brighton honeycomb weave uh, and the linen, this thing which are used for uh, towel materials generally to have which have long floats and have good absorption.